Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is insertion sort for singly linked list and it is a medium level problem. So I was not actually able to upload the videos yesterday for both GRG and lead code. The reason was I was traveling and uh, I could not upload the video. So in case you have a day like this where I do not upload a video and you need a solution, I will upload the solution on my github which I do daily by the end of the day if not between the day I will definitely do it by the end of the day. So make sure you check that out and uh, if you in case you need the final code. But uh, that is it for on this particular information and let us quickly start with this particular problem that is insertion of singly linked list. Now we have been basically given a linked list and we have to specifically use insertion sort algorithm to sort this particular linked list. Right. Now insertion sort is a very trivial O of n square method in which we want to sort a particular array. So how do we actually sort it? So let me draw an array first. So let us say this is our array. Now what we do? We will have some values. So let us just take some random values. So this is let us say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 right. So let us say you want to sort this array in ascending order. Now how the online algorithms or in general you would see on the internet is you start from the first index and you compare this position with the previous positions right. So what you do since for this particular index there are no previous positions so let us just ignore this for now we are going to start from the second position right or the first index. So if you start from here, I want to compare this particular element with the previous elements, right? What do I do after comparing? If this particular element, let us say we want this array to be in ascending order. So 5 is obviously smaller than 6, 5 is smaller than 6, so definitely it should come before 6, right? This is the logic that you want to check. I am not hard coding the values that if a of i is less than a of i minus 1, you do not have to hard code this or memorize this particular part. It actually depends on how you want your array to be sorted, right? So you would see that whether 5 should come before 6 or not. So if you agree that 5 should come before 6, then definitely you will replace 6 with 5, right? So now how the array will look like is, so if there is an option to copy, just so let us say we have this. So we remove 6 and 5. Now 5 will come here and 6 will come here. Right. This is how it works. Now we come to the next index that is this particular index and we compare it with the previous position. So it is definitely smaller than 6 and we want smaller numbers to come before. So what we will do, we will we can either replace 4 with 6 in the current step only or there is another method to do which I will tell you in a while. But let us say we take this particular element and swap it with 6. Right now, what will happen? So, if in this step, what we do? So, 5 was here, 6 comes here, and 4 comes here. Now, again, what we can try to do is we see that 4 should come before even 5. So, again, I swap these two elements. Right. So, if I swap them, what will happen? 4 will come at the first position, and 5 will come after it. Right. So, this was the case of direct swapping. Now there might also be the case where you might not directly swap. So this is one approach that you just directly swap and the other way is let us say you store, you take this particular element and store it in a variable called key, right. Now you see that you check the same condition, there is no difference, you check the same condition and you see that 5 should come at this particular position. So you do not swap it but you rather replace this particular value. So you write 5 here, right. Now you compare this particular value 6 with this particular 5. Now again you should you feel that this should come before so you write 6 here. Now since there are no previous elements to compare before this particular element there are no elements I will put the element which was stored in the key. So if I erase this and I put the element which was stored in the key variable right. So this is what you do to avoid more swappings and just directly replacing the values and then later just adding the key. Now it is totally up to you, you can just try to swap the elements as well, it is totally fine, that does not really make a difference, it is just a different ways of implementation, right. 
So this is something that you would generally see on the internet and it is very easy to find. But the problem that we have here is we have a linked list, right. So we have a connection to the next node, but we do not have a connection to the previous node, right. This is our current issue. Now what I would like to do is in this particular case how I implemented it was I went to the last node, I went to the last node and started sorting from the back. So you see in this particular case in the method I have told you we are pushing the smaller elements to the front, right. But if we start from the back we are going to push the larger elements to the back, right. So it will be much more clear to you when I show you the code and uh, let us just do a simple dry run of the same thing. So let us say we have this particular part. And you will realize that uh, why is this method important? There might be again other methods of solving this problem as well. This was just my implementation. So if we start from the back, you will see that there are no elements after it. So we can just continue from here, no need of this particular index. Now if I take two, since I now I want to push the elements to the back. So I would want greater elements to go at the end, right. So this is, now you must be understanding why I said do not cram this particular part, do not learn this particular part that AI is less than AI minus 1. Some students try to learn this particular F condition that is not, that should not be the case. So now here what we want to do is we want to push the greater elements at the back because we want the array to be in sorted order or not decreasing order. So here we see that it is satisfying the condition that 2 should be greater than 1 and it should take the place of 1 and 1 should cut before it, right. So this is satisfying the condition. So we are going to do exactly that particular thing. What we are going to do? We are going to swap the positions of 2 and 1. So we remove this 2 and write 1 here and then 2 here, right. So this is done. Now what you have to do is, we come, oh, so I will have to remove in this also. So 1 is finally here and 2 is here. Now we come to 3. We will have to compare 3 with 1, okay. So 3 is greater than 1, that means it should take its place. Again, 3 is also greater than 2, should also take its place. Let us see how, let us see this particular part in action. So I am going to uh, like tell you the method with the key. You can also just keep on swapping the elements, that also works. I have implemented it with the key variable, so that is why I am showing you this particular part. So first of all, I am going to store that this particular 3 in the key, right. Now what I do, I compare the current element with the next element. Right. So that, that is definitely greater and I want the smaller element to come first. So what I do, I replace this particular position with the smallest ele smaller element that is 1 here. So again like this particular 2 should come before my key, so that is why I write 2 here. Right. And at the end, at the end my key should be there. Right. So since there are no next elements to compare, I just directly put my key that was 3 here. So each time you are comparing the key with the element next to be found and then you are setting those values. So what is the actual benefit of this? What you can do is let us say I have a helper function. So this is going to be a recursive function. Now I can just recursively call my helper function again on the next node. So eventually what will happen? So let us say I started my helper function from the first position. I will go to this particular position then this, then this, then this and then finally reach this. I will also go here but I will come back from here to here, right. So I am currently at this particular node. Now I can start my traversal or I can start looking for the next node after going backwards, right. Similarly when I am at this particular node, I can start going backwards. So I can go in this direction because I know I have a next pointer, but I cannot go in the previous direction, right. That is being controlled by the recursive function only. So when I come here, I will automatically go back to here, then go back to here. So in this particular way, if you ignore the stack heap or the recursive call stack heap, recursive call stack, the memory consumed by it, the overall space complexity will be O of 1 only. If you ignore the recursion, right. So there is another thing, we have not used any data, additional data structure to store the previous node. That is what I wanted to say. So let us now have a look at the code. So what I have done is, uh, first of all, this is my helper function and I just call my helper function on the head node. So inside my helper function, if my current node is null pointer, I am just directly going to return. Otherwise, I am directly calling the next pointer, right, which is current dot next. So I am not executing any code, I am just moving on to the next pointer. When I come to a particular pointer, what I do, I initialize my key with current data and I initialize my next node with current next. 
So while next, that means while next is not equal to null pointer, if the data at the next is less than my key, right? So I am comparing the data of the element with my key so that I know at which position I have to insert my key. So I am going to set my current data as next data and I am going to update my current as next, right? So next also becomes the new currents next. This is how both current and next are updating. Otherwise, if this is not true, I'm just going to break out from here. So if this is not true, that means I have found the correct position of the key and current data should be equal to the key itself. So this is how you can easily solve this problem. Now we have tried to do this problem in O of 1 space complexity. That is the reason I went with this particular approach. Otherwise, you could also have stored the previous nodes and taken O of n extra space, right? This also must be taking some space due to this recursion, but we are going to ignore the recursion for now. We are not using any additional data subset. That is what I wanted to say, right? So at the end, I can just return my head pointer and my linked list will be sorted. So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and the solution is absolutely correct. So you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did and consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.